What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this evening. So what we're going to be covering in this video is a couple of the changes that we've seen on the Ortex short interest and utilization data, mainly how accurate is this utilization number that we are seeing right now? Is it accurate? Is it getting closer to being accurate in terms of the cost to borrow? Well, we're going to take a look and see. We're also going to be going over a little bit of the options chain going into the end of this week, the max pain, and then the two big things we need to discuss in this update. So the first thing is, well, we've kind of been seeing a lot of wild things been happening in the market now, today is no different. I've just seen that Citadel has significantly increased their long position in AMC and has initiated a position in shares on GameStop. We're going to go over exactly what I think is going on with what Citadel is doing with this position that they have right now and what exactly this means for us going forward. Now, in addition to this, we're also going to be talking about what Adam Marin has been doing recently. He's kind of coming out and targeting some of these short sellers, really making it known and using his power on social media to kind of draw attention to the manipulation and the manipulative short selling that has been going on in our market for years along with this new uh develop these these few uh new developments with the department of justice so before we get into all of that information if you enjoy the information and analysis that i provide for you in this video make sure you go down and hit that like button it costs you nothing to do it but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn and if you guys want to see more videos like this Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So AMC closed the day today, $19.67, up 19 cents. 0.98%. We started off the day very, very strong. Um, and then the buyers just weren't able to counteract all of that selling pressure coming into the overall market. Remember, I like to talk about volume as a result, not a cause. If there was volume of 10 on the day, but it was a lot of buyers willing to transact at higher prices than the sellers were willing to sell them at, then the price would go up. Now, coming over to the Ortex data over here, we do have Ortex listing AMC's utilization at 100%. Now, what this would mean is you got to think about this in terms of what the utilization equation actually is. Shares on loan versus shares actually, or, or shares institutions are actually willing to lend. Now, what this would mean is that there are zero or very, very few shares that institutions have to lend out right now. But we're seeing some pretty high volume in the securities lending market. And when we come over to Stonko Tracker right here uh, on their broker that they're reporting from, 1.4 million shares available to borrow at about 0.8% cost to borrow. Now, there's kind of two ways that we can look at this. The first way is the data that we're looking at here is wrong. The utilization is wrong. A lot of this other data could be wrong as well. The second way we could look at this is, well, it's very possible that the cost to borrow is lagging behind the utilization. We've seen it happen a couple of times, just like back here, where the orange line starts to come up, then cost to borrow starts to come up after the utilization already spikes. Now, we do see a little bit of an increase in the cost of borrow today, 1.55%. Maximum cost of borrow stepping up a little bit, but still, we still have 21.16% estimated short interest, 108 million shares sold short. Again, very, very high. The shorts have not covered. Now, coming back over to Stonko Tracker to take a look at the options chain, well, this week is a monthly options expiration date, so we are going to see a little bit more volume and open interest on the options chain, but there's only 42,000 contracts in the money with 263,000 contracts out of the money. In order to see a big gamma move to the upside, a little bit of a gamma squeeze, we would need to have a very significant increase in the share price to get even more of these contracts in the money and hopefully some of these puts out of the money too. So let's see what happens going into the next couple of days. But again, when we look at all of the catalysts as a whole for AMC coming up, the debt refinance, Batman, earnings, a lot of these different good things coming out, theater acquisitions, it's still looking very, very bullish for AMC into this in, in the short, medium, and long term. Now, coming over to uh, swaggy stocks over here, we're going to take a look at the max pain, $19 a share. So this is the price that the market makers, uh, Citadel, really want the price to be at by the end of the week because it means that the most amount of contracts, options, calls, and puts are expected expiring out of the money, meaning that they are able to collect the most premium from essentially most of the time retail investors kind of gambling on these weekly or monthly options. Now, 
Let's get into this situation with Citadel and exactly what this means. So coming over to Fintel right here, we can see that this right here is AMC's institutional ownership. It's AMC Entertainment Holdings. We're looking at the right stock here. Coming down a little bit further, we can see that Citadel Advisors right here increased their position to 162,000 shares and they increased it by 382%. In the previous couple of quarters, Citadel has been decreasing um, their share position while increasing their derivatives positions, calls and puts. Now they're decreasing their options and increasing their shares. It's a little bit of an interesting thing that they're doing here. Now, we also can come over and take a look at GameStop over here. GameStop institutional ownership right here. We come over. Citadel initiated a share position of 120,000 shares. Here is kind of the breakdown of this. I don't want anybody to get all that worried about Citadel buying AMC or, uh, or GameStop. I want you guys to think about Citadel the hedge fund and Citadel the market maker in two different ways. I know that might be difficult. Obviously, they're probably communicating back and forth. But when you think about how quote unquote naked shorts or synthetic shares are created, the hedge funds aren't the ones doing it. It's always going to be the fault of the market makers who are trying to provide liquidity to the market or the prime brokers. So like a Goldman Sachs or a Morgan Stanley um, trying to loan out these shares, but not meeting those lookout, uh, locate requirements. So market makers and prime brokers are responsible for naked shorting. Hedge funds, it's very possible. If you look back at Mark Cahote's Goldman Sachs deposition, it's a legal document. You can have your opinion on the guy all you want, but when you look at the legal document, a lot of these institutions don't know that they're naked short because they're still paying the cost to borrow. It's the banks really manipulating the entire system. So here's kind of how this applies to this. Citadel, the market maker, with all of their short exempt shares when they're providing liquidity to the market, mainly in times when we see these massive increases. So last January, last June, and even when we're on SSR. That is when this situation can get really out of hand, creates the failures to delivers. They try to hide all of these synthetic shares and kind of brush them under the rug. And that's how that situation is created. Their hedge fund Yes, they can try and manipulate share prices with short and distort tactics that we're going to take a look at in a minute, but their hedge fund isn't the one that's creating these naked shorts. There's no naked short button that these institutions can push. So when we look at this as a whole here, Citadel is actually pretty bullish on AMC and GameStop right now, which is kind of interesting, even though Ken Griffin has kind of been labeled as the bad guy in this entire situation due to his role on the market making side. So that is kind of my thoughts on this. If you guys have any questions or any other thoughts on this, make sure you guys leave that in the comments down below. Now, let's get into this situation with Adam Aaron and him kind of calling out these manipulative short sellers. So we come over to his tweet right here. Well, 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 would you look at this? Justice Department is pursuing wide-ranging investigation of short sellers. Federal prosecutors are investigating whether short sellers conspired to drive down stock prices from the Wall Street Journal. What's interesting about this is that when we think about Adam Aaron's role in this entire situation, he's the CEO of the company. He's trying to make sure that the company is going to survive and thrive going into the future. We've seen him make a couple of statements about high frequency trading and derivatives in the past, but nothing too crazy. But now he's making a lot more frequent statements about short sellers. I think that's kind of a morale boost for everybody, which is a good thing. Hopefully he comes out with even more things that are going to kind of limit the manipulation, hopefully, that we are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis with AMC. And I think this is a really good start. But we do have a couple of other things to talk about with this Department of Justice investigation. And one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is the difference between an SEC investigation and a Department of Justice investigation with the SEC. It's just a fine, hurts their wallet, they can kind of move on, and they kind of factor that in as a cost of doing business. But for the Department of Justice, the penalty is jail time. So when we come over to this article right here, Justice Department targets spoofing and scalping in short seller investigation. Muddy Waters, Carson Block served with a search warrant in the probe of illegal trading tactics. Now, when we look at this situation right here, and I saw this idea circulating around Twitter today, how are you now going to call the apes conspiracy theorists calling out manipulation and manipulative short selling in the market <laughs> at mainstream media? How are you going to continue to call us conspiracy theorists when the own Department of Justice is looking into this and obviously sees that they have a problem because they are publicizing this investigation?
Now, the other thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is that these Department of Justice investigations are going to take a decent time to play out, a decent amount of time to really play out. And that's kind of what we want as retail investors. The reason being is that we don't want the Department of Justice, the SEC, or any of these other regulatory institutions to kind of just come out willy-nilly, throwing allegations at these institutions without evidence, bringing them to court, and then the case just gets thrown out. We want them to be bulletproof cases where these institutions are going to really feel the pain of what they've done to our markets and kind of learn that they cannot continue on these types of actions. So that is mainly going to wrap up this update on AMC. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video. So I hope you guys are having a great evening and I'll see you guys in the next video.